subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our eyes with the ziyarat of Imam Zaman. Please recite the Nandar Sawaat from Muhammad Wali. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Habib ilahi al-alamina nabiyyina wa shafi'ina wa al-tabib kulubina abil qawsim muhammad وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المحصومين المظلومين واللعنة الضائمة على أعدائهم أعداء الدين أما بعد فقد قال الحسين عليه السلام إنما خرجت لطلب الإصلاح في أمة جدي أريد أن أمر بالمعروف وأنهى عن المنكر صلوات الله محمد وعلى محمد الله محمد وعلى محمد Although tonight, according to some of the riwayat, is the shahadat of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, but the days are of Muharram, Ashura, and Safar, which are dedicated to the cause of Imam Hussain and the struggle of Imam Hussain in Karbala and there is no doubt that Karbala was a result of all the troubles, all the hard works done by Hazrat Amir al muminin Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain al-Salaam themselves. Please write this word for Muhammad Wali. So, if we just see Karbala, what happened, just take ourselves back 1400 years to see what was the condition of the people and why it was necessary for Imam Hussain to go to Karbala and get himself and at least 72 of his best companions, the best people available at this time to get martyred. What was the need and requirement for that one? What was the need and requirement and what was the situation which compelled Imam Hussain to perform this ibadat of Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi and al Munkir in a way that everyone is sacrificed in Karbala? What was the situation there? What was the reality? There's a hadith from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just saying that I am just not, it's not the translation just what it means, you know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells some of his companions that how worst will be the time when the women, they will be doing wrong things and the men, male, they will become fasiq. They will be doing gunahani kabira openly. And nobody will be doing amr bil maruf and nahi anil munkir. Someone asked, Oh, Ya Rasulullah, will that time come? Will we have to see that time? And the Prophet said that you will see, was than that time that people will be used to the munkar as if they are doing ma'ru, as if they are doing something good. I said, oh, Ya Rasulullah, will that time also, people will see the, such time also? He said, it will be worse than that, that the people will be doing munkar regularly as if they are doing ma'ru, as they are doing something good. And ma'ru, a good thing, will take a place of a bad thing. Meaning that the society, the way of thinking of the people will change drastically so much that people, when they will be doing something bad, everybody will be encouraging them. Everybody will be saying, you are doing something good. Everybody will be appreciating them. And whenever somebody tries to do something good, people will rise 
And they'll say, what are you doing? What is this? That condition, and ulama say that that condition had breached at the time of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. And this was a condition that Khalifa of the time was considered to be a political leader and a religious leader. Today we have got religion separate and politics separate. We consider coming to mosque, doing to the center, doing something like this, it's a religious thing. And I'm going to earn for my family, I'm going to earn for my mortgage, I'm going to look after my children, buy clothes for my children or my family. That is something which is a worldly affair. It is not a reality like that. Islam also tells us to take care of our children, our family, our own selves, earn money through halal means. That is also a part of religion. But in reality, what is going on in the society, we have split the two things to be this thing is religious and this is non-religious. We are coming to the mosque is religion. Rest, nothing to do with that. In our practical life, religion has nothing to do with us. It is only a part-time job when we turn above the age of 45, 50, when the gray hair start coming up and we can't cover them with colors. Then what we do? Now we need to go to Ziyarat. Now we need to go for Hajj because now we can be called Hajj. If somebody used to go for Hajj with, with the black, you know, this is not your age to go for Hajj. And it is a same was the condition at the time of Imam Hussain alayhi where religion and politics, both the leadership used to stay with the Khalif of the time. The Khalif used to be known as a religious leader as well as political leader. Whosoever would have been the Khalif, that didn't make a difference. And we see, if we go in back into the history, we see at the time of the second Khalif, if he says that in Azan, you have to say a salat of khairam in al-nawm, there's nobody to resist. And everybody started saying, as salatu khair min al in azan for fajr prayers. And if he says that hajj tamattu is finished and the nikah of mutar is stopped, nobody comes. It is a religious affair. Similarly, in the political affairs, if he says that I'm going to attack Iran, nobody can stop him. He, has, he takes the decision. Similarly, the political decisions as well as the religious decisions used to be taken by the Khalif, everybody used to accept it. Nobody used to stand and say, what are you doing? Nobody used to question. There was no habit of questioning the Khalif of the time. Now, the Khilafat from first Khalif came to the second, from the second to the third Khalif, and from the third to Imam Ali wasalam. Imam Ali was also the Khalif of that time, and he was also the Imam nominated by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. But although he was holding both of the positions, today two main schools of thought are Ahlul Sunnah and the, the school of thought of the Shayyu. There are two schools of thought. So both of the schools of thought, the main position of the Imam and the Khalif was held by Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. Before that, what was usual that if somebody comes and he challenges the Khalif of the time, he was considered to be subjected to jihad and he was subjected to being killed because he stood against the Khalif of the time. He was not spared. It was the most heinous crime at that time to stand in front of the Khalif and not accept the words of the Khalif. But when it comes to the time of Imam Ali, we see that the Amir of Sham of Syria, he stands up and he challenges him. Nobody's there to help him and nobody, people turning, going left, right, Sifin, the Battle of Sifin, the Battle of Jamal, and then the Khawarij, the main thing that came up. You know, Khawarij was not just a group of people. It was a way of thinking. It was a school of thought that came into existence after the death of the Prophet. Till the time of Imam Ali, this definite school of thought came into existence. They had their own values. They considered that if somebody commits a sin, there's no way of Toba. He had to take the punishment to clean himself. And such things. They were very firm in their ibadat, rallying tasbih all the time. Sujood and prayers was their definite way of life 
but where was the uh, di diversion from the deen is that they stood against the Khalif and they started fighting and through power, through terrorism, terrorism, what is the definition of terrorism? Terrorize people and the people start doing what you want them to do by terrorizing. Islam says convince others. You should convince others to, to bring them to a point. If somebody you want to accept Islam, you need to convince him logically, rationally, and through a hadith and through the signal of convincing is the main source of guiding the mankind. Allah don't does never want that a human being should be forced to accept Islam. Every being in the world is forced to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants that a human being should accept Islam and supremacy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his own free will. So, how is the free will? You can change the free will by logic and by rationality, by convincing. That's the only way. But these guys, they try to change the people by force. Allah has never wanted to force people. In Quran it says, The only duty of me is to convince you and inform you about the reality of life. This is the path, but this thought, this school of thought came into existence by forcing the people and they were, they were the first one to lay down the foundation of terrorism in Islam. The foundation of terrorism practically that came into forefront was by the Khawarij. And the same thing, the same thought was brought forward at the time of Yazid. The Yazidi figure, Imam Hussain al when he was asked to pay allegiance to Yazid, he never says, I will not pay allegiance to Yazid. He says, a person like me will never pay allegiance to a person like Yazid. Meaning that the person possessing the qualities of Yazid should not expect that a per person possessing the qualities of Imam Hussein will pay allegiance to him. Why? Why was it so important not to pay allegiance to Yazid? Why? Because now the basic foundation of Islam had changed. That was, he was terrorizing people in the same way as the Khawarij was doing. He wanted to terrorize people and by that terrorism, he wanted to force everyone to come into the folds of Islam. And Yazid being the Khalif of the time, if that would have continued, he was supposed to be, he was thought to be a religious leader as well as political leader. So the people would have said that this is the real Islam and Islam is spread by force, by terrorism. You can do that. And that's the way which was Islam. So the real Islam would have vanished. So now was the time for Imam Hussain to stand in front of it and make a, a, a sort of a wall and not accept the bayat of Yazid. Salawat wa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa so, what was happening at that time? Imam Hussain himself says, don't you see that ma'roof is not acted upon? The things which are life, which are allowed, the values which were created by the Prophet What is Islam? Islam, what is the reality of Islam? Islam's reality is not the just praying, fasting, hajj, zakat, khums, jihad, and having belief in tawheed, and the Buat and, and the Day of Judgment and uh, Adl and that in usul din and furu din No, it's a practical form which can be seen in the actions and behavior of an individual, of a family and of a community and a whole nation. There were some in, enlightened values which were brought into the family and into the person and into the whole community. Those values they were a danger now because those values the Prophet himself had worked on individuals, he had worked on the families, he had worked on the whole community to create personalities like Bilal, like Misa Tamar, like Abu Zar, like Salman. These personalities were created by the hard work of the Prophet and the whole community, the system. There was Islam is for an individual, it is for a family, and Islam as a system was established by Prophet. That had that attraction 
with which help, with the help of which the Muslims were able to conquer Makkah. It was not by force, it was by convincing that the people were coming down into the fold of Islam. That was the main thing. Now that thing was being changed by Yazid and saying that there was no revelation and there was no prophet. He was attacking the foundation of Islam. And if he would have been allowed to govern the Muslim community, what would have happened? The real Islam would have evaporated and in its place, another Islam, which was of the, according to the thinkings of Bani Umayyah and Yazid, that would have taken the place and nobody would have been able to find the reality of Islam. So now it was for Imam Hussein to come out. So Imam Hussein didn't have an option. He did have options. He could have saved his life. He could have saved his family. He could have saved his companions. But the price, what was the cost for that? The price was the sacrifice of Islam. Either he could save Islam or he could save all these personalities. So what he opted, that was not an option. If somebody asked me that you leave the love of Ahlul Bayt and you will be allowed to live, that means that's not an option for us. We can't leave the love of Ahlul Bayt. How can we leave Islam and how can a personality like Imam Hussein leave Islam? That was not an option, although it was an option, but it was not an option for a personality like Imam Hussein. So what he opted, he opted to go to do Amr bil Ma'aruf and Nahi Anil Munkir. This is what happened in the history. What is the condition today? Today is exactly, exactly the same condition. See, you see here, male and male relationship, if somebody opposes it, it's considered as a bad thing. Nobody discusses it. You, you can't discuss it according to the law. If you discuss it, you are doing against the law. See, and according to religion, now I was hearing that there has come out a version of Bible, Queen's James version, and they say they allow and they are compatible. That's the real translation. I don't know in the reality how it is, but they say this is a real translation and the same sex marriages are allowed and encouraged in that. So where is the world going? Where is the world going? Where, which way we are moving? If somebody have got relations, the families, they don't mind. They say, okay, relationship, no problem. But if they say they are getting married, they will come, oh, why are they getting married? We don't love, we don't like them to get married. It's the open question that I am asked as being a Maulana, people come down, oh, our son-in-law had relationship, oh, keep on having the relationship. And I was surprised with this. I said, if he's doing haram, you are saying it's okay. But if he's doing nikah, you are saying it's bad. So where the condition, the mentality of the society, haven't it reached the same point where Imam Hussein came to Karbala? Have you not? There are thousands of examples today. If somebody is cheating someone and earning money, people say, oh, he's very intelligent. He does, he's made a lot of money, you know. No.